Okay, let, let's consider now the uh, possible approaches to implementation of digital design. Keep in mind the considerations we have done so far. Well, we have different possibilities. One is to do a custom design, which is to make a design completely ad hoc for the chip we have at the hand. The other possibility is to do a so-called semi-custom design. For the semi-custom design, we have two main options. One is to do a so-called cell-based design. And the other one is to do a so-called array-based design. Now we will look into these options one by one. Actually, for the cell-based design, there are two different uh, sub-options, which are standard cell design and the other option is to use macro cells. So, both in both cases, we have pre-made cells, which already perform some logical functions that we use to build a uh, design. If you make a software analogy is, uh, let's say, to, to, uh, is basically essentially to write a script, to use uh, a library of functions already available. In the case of array-based, we have two options. One is the gate array. And the other one is the reconfigurable logic. Reconfigurable logic, the so called FPGA. So all these options are used uh, as of now. I would say that the most used is the standard cell approach and the macro cell approach for, let's say, large volumes and for small volumes, the FPGA approach. But in many cases, actually, it's a, it is also used a, mixed, a mix of the different approaches. Let, let, let's delve into the, to each of them and to look at what uh, we can actually uh, learn from the different possibilities. So let's start with custom design. So the, the advantages and the main characteristic of, of characteristics of custom design is that you can have high performance. Really, this is the way to go if you want high performance, low power consumption per function. Of course, in the case of custom design, nothing, nothing is reusable. You really need to do it once. And since you need to, let's say, design at the level of the single transistor, you actually have a very time consuming process. which means that you have typically a high cost of design because we literally need to go transistor by transistor okay and you also have typically a high time to market what is the time to market is the time that passes from the moment in which you start with the design 
to the moment in which you can push the product to the market okay of course you have to take into account the design time the different design iterations if needed and then of course the production time uh, so uh, the, 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 the things here are practically apparent <laughs> when they when one actually used uses custom design typically there are three cases you need to have uh, a block that is reused many times because you have a high cost a high fixed cost and then you have to have need you need to have a high denominator in terms of the total cost of the chip if you can reuse that block several times then you can actually uh, let's say uh, spread the design cost over a large number of chips so for blocks that have to be used many times and this means in practice the library sells the cells that will be used for the custom the, for the semi custom designs so you have uh, basic logic gates that you can use and use again and again they are they belong to a library it's similar to a library of primitives in the in the software world and then they can be uh, let's say uh, designed transistor by transistor And the most recent case which is very uh, interesting of course is uh, uh, when, when I, I told you already that uh, um, recently we had this huge transition from Intel from the 32 nanometer uh, process to the 22 nanometer process uh, because there was the introduction of the 3D transistor the FinFET remember the, 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 the picture that I've shown you of course when you have to change completely the geometry of the transistor you need to redo all the standard all the library cells because all the basic logic gates have to be redone again you cannot simply scale the old ones you need to completely redo all of them and this was the main design problem for Intel at the time because they introduced this new technology the designers had to use the new technology for the new processors and of course they did not have the the, the, the library cells and, uh, and and also they expected the library cells to be very different with respect to the previous ones and so basically intel put together a team of more than 1000 people specifically to redo all the library cells because I mean, uh, library cells for a complete microprocessor is, is really complex and this was really a huge uh, task of course so many people were required because they had to do all the basic cells transistor by transistor again in the in the older generations it was easier because when they moved from 45 nanometer to 32 nanometer of course they need to they needed to redo all the library cells but it was easy because basically they just needed to shrink them to reduce the size more or less uh, the, the geometry was the same they needed to adjust the size of the of, of the transistor but in this case they need to completely redo everything and this was the reason for for the change so this is a very typical case in which one use a custom design there's a new technology and then you need to redo all the cells and which means every year and a half every two years for all the main foundries then the other option is it is when you need to have uh, w w when you need to design a chip which needs high performance and very high volume because if you have very high volume then you can let's say divide the fixed costs over a large denominator very high volume this actually i must say was 
the typical uh, type of chip that has a very high volume is a microprocessor. Okay. I would say that in practice, this is not doable anymore. This was doable for simpler microprocessors, but, but for the most modern microprocessors, it's undoable. One cannot go with a custom design. Uh, for example, one of the famous <laughs> microprocessors that was designed completely custom, actually, but with pen and paper, was this one. Let me just show you this. This is the Intel 40. Okay, this is just a, a, a photograph of the die. We already discussed this uh, uh, 4004, 4004, uh, as they call it. And you, you, if you look at it, it is basically done by hand completely. It's just 2000 transistors, no, not much, much more than that, so it is doable. It was doable. Of course, at some point, when you go up in size, you need to, let's say, use different uh, uh, options then there was another option that is still used some time in you know, for the cases in which you use custom design and it is when cost is not an issue and typically it is the case for supercomputing applications that is not really something, let's say, actual, uh, realistic in these times. Because all now supercomputing, supercomputers now are done with, uh, with uh, custom processors. But since, uh, let's say, 10 years ago, you still, 10, 15 years ago, you still had specific processors for supercomputers with also specific logic and then they were all custom designed and then still you have sometimes military applications for some military applications cost is not the most important issue so even if you have a low volume you 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 you, you see some custom design so uh yeah. So let me just complete, just to stress the issue, complete, circuit, transistor by transistor. By the way, Custom design is the norm for analog applications and for radio frequency applications. Okay, it's not, it's not, let's say, um, disappeared. For analog circuits and for radio frequency, high frequency applications, radio transceivers, and so on, you always have uh, uh, custom design. So any, every transistor is designed one by one, but in the case of digital, digital logic this is disappearing now let's look at the other option the semi-custom design and in particular the cell-based So here the thing is that there are some, uh, there is a library of cells that is used for the design. So the design is not done transistor by transistor, but, but cell by cell. What, what, what are these cells? Basically, it, it, it really depends. You can have uh, uh, the so-called standard cells that are very simple cells. They can be logic gates, so an AND, an OR, 
an inverter, a two input NAND, a three input NAND, a four input NAND, and so on. Logic gates, single logic gates. Then you can have other uh, medium uh, uh, scale of integration circuits. So, for example, a decoder, <coughs> multiplexers, encoders. So this is a low level of granularity, single logic gates or medium scale of integration circuits. So let's say at most 100 transistors in, in, in total. And then you can have the so-called macro cells that can be larger cells. They can be, for example, a memory bank. or uh, let's say um, um, a shift register or or, or uh, uh, yeah so sometimes a, a, a large decoder would be a macro cell it, it, it really depends on how large it is uh, you also have mega cells because in recent cases you can have uh, as a mega cell a complete microprocessor for example for the control module of the chip you can use a microprocessor as a cell you put it there or you can use uh, for example DSP or a radio or for example a the PCI interface or uh, an I.O. interface of other type, etc. That you can have also complex modules that you can use as a single piece. So, how the standard cell works? And things have changed recently, but let's look at the simplest situation and, and then we look at the situation that we have typically uh, now. So you basically have this library of cells for which you have uh, a complete layout already done. So the only thing that you need to do once you have the design is to take the cell that you need. For example, you need an end gate, you take the end gate and you place on the die. So you place on the floor plan of the chip. And uh, typically you have a fixed geometry. You basically have some rows on which you can put the cells. The these are the rows for cells this this one and this one and the space between them is called routing channel because it is used for the interconnections so each standard cell has a fixed height it's the height of the row and they only change in terms of width depending on the number of transistors that you need to have so you basically put the cells you need here for example one is here the other one I put here the other one is here then another here another here another here then you c continue and place the cells that you need and then you put the interconnections you can use you typically have different levels of metals so you can put interconnections one on top of the other for example the blue is for the low level of interconnections for the second metal level I can use this one or I can use this one for a level above I can use uh, another level of interconnections for example to go 
till the third row. Imagine that I put the standard cells here. So the, the thing that has changed in recent uh, times is that at the beginning, basically when the standard cells were invented and it was already the 90s, it, it was 20 years ago, not, not that much before, you did not have, uh, let's say, many levels of metal interconnections. So you really needed this large routing channel in order to have room for the interconnections. And sometime, if you, for example, needed to go from here to here, you would, uh, for example, create here a void, which, is, which was called the feed-through channel, and then, for example, pass the interconnections through here, because it was at a low level. Okay. Now, in, in recent technologies, you basically have many levels of interconnections, from 7 to 10, and so you do not need the routing channel anymore be because you can go actually above the standard cells for the interconnections. You can cross the interconnections as much as you want because you have many different levels of metals. So this was, le let's, say, the, 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 let's say, first generations, and the newer generations of standard cells are let's say, somewhat different in the sense that you have uh, everything extremely packed. You do not have a routing channel anymore. Everything is more or less adjacent. And then you have something like, uh, uh, just to, 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 to give you an idea, you have this, 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 then you have this, okay? And then the, the connections are not done on the periphery, are, are done from the middle of the ships. And then you have these direct interconnections, as much as you need them, as many as you need of them, basically on different levels of metals. On top of this, you have other interconnections and you can, you have much more flexibility. So. The advantage is that now you can, let's say, use the space, the die area, in a much more efficient way. I have a, a couple of pictures. Let me just see if I can. This is, for example, uh, uh, the design of a standard cell from the 90s. OK, you can see here. Uh, Basically, these, uh, you, you, you can see pretty clearly these uh, black stripes that are the channel rows, the, 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 the cell rows, okay? And then you can see between them the interconnections, okay? This, this was basically at the beginning of the standard cell uh, technology. All around, uh, you have the, the, the pads of the of the die for interconnections with the external pins, and then you have all these rows. If you look at the modern standard cell chip, you have something different. So this is one of them, for example. You can see, just to have an idea, everything is extremely more compacted because you do not need the routing channel anymore. You have all the, the interconnections on different levels and all the different colors there are the different level of metals so you can do at a different height so you can cross without any and any problem uh, the interconnections because they are at a different height and you do not have any routing problem so things have changed um, significantly and uh, as I was saying before for large volumes the, the standard cell is now the most commonly used type of design approach uh, yeah. it's also yeah there, uh, yeah there are a couple of considerations that we, we should make Be before doing that I would like also to show you another figure which is uh, let me 
maybe this one no yeah this one uh, this is just uh, to give you an idea these are old processors by by Intel they're pretty pretty all pretty old but just I wanted to 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 show you how the design becomes more regular this was the 4004 that I that I've shown at the beginning basically it was drawn by hand completely in all the other um, uh, design uh, on all the other designs basically they already used some uh, design automation tool and as you can see the design becomes progressively more regular you have big rectangular boxes in which you have basically arrays of memories or of other registers or something similar so uh, the, this is because they start to use standard cells and to uh, therefore build a more regular structure within the chip so there are some parts that are custom design and other parts in which you basically have arrays of standard cells okay uh, oh no uh, okay a couple of things how does one proceed in this case from the design at the let's say logic level to the the layout on, on, on ship in, in terms of standard cells for example now what happens in practice is that there's a strong use of uh, electronic design automation tools and uh, the, uh, the the thing is uh, the, the, the following basically one can make a design at a high level of abstraction high level of abstraction with a so called hardware description language So one can describe the operation in behavioral terms or uh, also in, in, in terms of the operation of the Bayesian building blocks. Then there's a process that can be automated in the sense that now, uh, uh, let's say, syn um, logic synthesis tools are available. So software packages are available to transform this uh, design in terms of hardware description language in terms of a design at a gate level. So a gate level design, gate level design. this is the so-called gate netlist depending on the situation this can be almost automatic completely automatic quasi automatic or auto automatic and then verified by hand it, it really depends on, on the complexity from this situation it, it's easy to go to the use of standard cells because the main mechanism is that when I have a gate level design for each gate I have a, 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 let's say an associated standard cell so what I need to do is just to place all the cells that I need 
and to route them to include the interconnections and to do that of course i can do that by hand but for the more more complex design there are specific placement and routing tools so another type of design tools are placement and routing tools that uh, can uh, perform the operation that I uh, described before by hand and then at the end I have the standard cell layout and this can go directly to the foundry of course now I'm not, I'm not discussing all the verification and validation of the different aspects we will come back later to that but just this is just to fix the the the, the concept that all these passages do not have to be done by hand uh, in practice I can do uh, the design at a high level of abstraction and, and then let the process automatically transform everything to uh, layout on silicon of course I can try to optimize uh, using also my my, 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 my my, my hand and looking at the process following the process do not letting not not letting it go automatically uh, one point that is important to stress is that in practice this is in many times not less uh, uh, efficient than doing everything by hand in the sense that when the design is very complex uh, even in terms of uh, uh, of uh, finding an optimal solution typically these tools can be better at finding an, op an optimal solution in terms of standard cells that doing everything by hand so one typically does that in uh, in in combination let, me let the automatic tool do everything and then looks at, at, at the whole process and tries to improve it if some way can be found okay uh, this type of uh, design using standard cell is very suitable to the fabless industry model what is the fabless industry model it's a mod it's a model of operation in which you do not have a company that can do both the design and the fabrication of the chip okay it, it's a model that it's it, it's become very common in the last uh, i would say 15 years okay before it was pretty uncommon but now what we have is that we have several companies that are specialized in the fabrication of integrated circuits so that are specialized in uh, in, uh, the, in, uh, in the semiconductor process I, I, I think I already mentioned this aspect uh, during last lecture and then we have other companies that are specialized in the design of the chip and in selling it so you have these two this uh, uh, let's say division of the work you have a fabulous company that does the design part typically the testing part and the sale and then you have a foundry that makes the CMOS fabrication Of course, the foundry, 
let's say has different customers and the, their customers are fabulous many fabulous companies and the fabulous companies but well in, in practice a fabulous company typically use one foundry or if they if they succeed try to use two or three foundries in order to have some different uh, source which is also which is always good for let's say a reliability of, of operation uh, among the foundries the most important one i already mentioned is now tsmc that is based in taiwan then there is umc that is based in taiwan uh, uh, yeah then there is uh, this mc means microelectronic corporation taiwan semiconductor no Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation. This is Uni United Manufacturing Corporation. And then there is SIMC, which is in China. Then uh, several of them, but this is the biggest one. Uh, also, for example, Samsung does something as a foundry. I mean, Samsung make its own chips and also make chips for other customers uh, yeah but they do not count as a foundry typically they they are doing they are called IDE integrated device so in the fabulous company um, well what, what let's say the most uh, uh, known ones are Marvel Broadcom Avago Dialog um, Skyworks Cambridge Semiconductor Corp uh, Cambridge Semiconductor CSR and do not remember what R stays for uh, there are several of them so these are the different roles why i mentioning that because typically it's the foundry that provides the uh, the, the the cell library the main situation is the following the foundry that does the CMOS fabrication also produces the cell library and provides them to the fabless company so the fabulous company first decides what foundry to use and then from the foundry it has the cell library and can use the cell library to design the integrated circuit and this is the way it goes so the fabulous company does the design sends the layout to the foundry the foundry fabricates the chip gives the chip back to the fabulous company the fabulous company does the testing if it works it's okay if it does not work it repeats and when it works it goes to make the sales okay this is the type of operation but the cell library is done by the foundry in addition to that there is another type of uh, situation which is the role of small ip vendors And these IP vendors are small companies typically that provides cell libraries. Additional cell libraries, typically for the more complex cells, the ones that we have called macro cells before. So more complex pieces of circuits, for example, a complete PCI interface, a complete module for the Ethernet interface or, or a complete radio transceiver to be put directly in the integrated circuit and they typically uh, design the block and try to sell the library to the fabulous company and this is another piece of the market and it's it's not uh, i mean typically they are small companies but they are not insignificant i mean they they, they, they can do uh, a good part of that w one of the big ones which I would not put in this category but it's not that far away is ARM 
it's not really uh, it's not fair to put them in this category even because they are not small but arm uh, the, the the english company that makes the the arm uh, microprocessors basically is a seller of ip and sells the ip to a fabulous company which puts the microprocessor as it is in the in in their chip and then goes to the foundry well arm is so big that it's not reasonable to put between the ip vendors but more or less the way it works is the same so this is the let's say the the the, the ecology of the different companies in the in this field and uh, a, 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 as you can see the fact of separating fabrication and library uh, and, and, and cell library um, let's say design from the chip design it's very convenient for the fabless model and it is one of the reasons why the fabless model has become so widespread now it, 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 it's it's a, a really successful industry model uh, also because uh, since uh, a fabrication plant uh, is very expensive now very few companies can build the, the, the this type of plants and then when they build it they serve a large number of customers okay uh, okay i want to continue along these lines because maybe i need to say something more about the macro cell i want to say something about the macro cell because uh, there are at least two different uh, uh, situations okay just to uh, uh, recall the thing we have the standard cells in which you have basic building blocks basic cells basic logic gates with the macro cell we have larger blocks uh, it, it can be even a complete microprocessor there are uh, two main options for this one is to have so-called hard macro in the case of hard macro we have a complete physical design on silicon so we have a predetermined functionality of the block and a predetermined physical implementation so in this case the macro cell is custom designed for a specific CMOS process because it can only work with a specific foundry CMOS process it, it, it is basically exactly as in the case of a standard cell it only works with that specific process and it also means that of course it cannot be ported to another process or to another CMOS manufacturer it's specific of that process so this is typically used for embedded memory and for embedded microprocessors For example, if I have to put some memory or microprocessor on a SIM card, on the chip for a SIM card, of course, I, I would buy a hard macro cell. Sometimes they're not so hard in the sense that basically they can be parameterized. For example, in the case of an embedded memory, maybe the macro cell can, in the macro cell, I can at least define the size of the memory that I want and then 
I decide the memory that I want, there is a software that is called a module compiler that transforms th this parameterization in a specific physical implementation. So it adjusts the size of the array, basically. But then that physical design is custom for the specific CMOS process. Okay. So can be para meterized with module compiler. The other option is to have soft macrocells. What is a soft macrocell? Basically, it's a cell that has a predetermined functionality, predetermined functionality, but no physical implementation. For example, it means that it is provided not at a physical level, but it is provided in terms of a gate netlist. So if I have a gate netlist, I can go through the standard cell um, design process. So the block is given in terms of, of gate level gate netlist and then we can make uh, we can use the standard cell library and then do the placement and routing again and of course in this case there is no um, uh, it, it's not a custom design in the sense that I, I can bring the soft micro cell even to another CMOS process or to another CMOS manufacturer so it is portable okay physical implementation There's, for example gate netlist in any case is is portable and uh, w when i was referring to ip vendors the ip vendors are mostly in this market because of course they prefer not to be let's say too strictly related to a specific cmos process so they typically sell a macro cell at the uh, in, in a soft uh, configuration as a gate net list it, it depends on the application but the most typical case is this one they sell a soft macro cell of course in order to sell the macro cell they need to also add the, the, the gate net list plus the software plus the, the, the um, let's say the software tools uh, plus the test um, uh, uh, um, plus testing procedure and tools of course all the additional uh, things that are needed in order to let customer use it Okay, let's stop here.